A trade agreement with the EU is not in sight. British authorities act out the emergency. And the German economy sounds the alarm. Now things could get really bad with Brexit, according to an internal dossier of the British government. In the supermarkets on the island, food is running out at the turn of the year. Panic buying already occurs at Christmas, the fuel is running out at the gas stations, while the trucks jam at the border crossings on both sides of the English Channel. Army units would have to ensure order in Great Britain, while the Navy would try to prevent a fishing war in the North Sea that threatens between boat crews from Great Britain and the EU. The gloomy worst case scenario paints a study that has now been leaked in London and the classification was sensitive by the cabinet office of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The purpose of the dossier is to prepare the authorities in the event that the 11 month Brexit transition period for the United Kingdom expires at the end of December without a new trade agreement having been negotiated with the EU by then. If a second wave of Corona hits the country at the same time, there's a threat of a severe economic crisis. Both are not only possible, but increasingly likely. Will the UK still experience the hard landing that was predicted for Brexit at the end of the year, despite the current exit treaty? In Brussels, the London simulation games are ringing the alarm bells. The study is seen by EU diplomats as a further indication that the British are actually preparing for a failure of the negotiations on a trade agreement and possibly working towards it in a targeted manner because they expect long-term benefits from it. The discussions so far on the future relationship have brought no progress. EU Chief Negotiator Michel Barnier expresses himself more and more disappointed and frustrated. Most recently he warned that things were going backwards and that an agreement was unlikely. Before a new round of negotiations that started this Tuesday, the mood is gloomy. For a meeting of the 27 EU ambassadors in Brussels last Wednesday, Brexit was removed from the agenda. Because of the standstill, there was nothing to talk about. The anger on the EU side is great, also in the team of actually hardened EU negotiators. Time pressure is sometimes useful for negotiations, but this time it is dangerous. Too many questions are unanswered, sticking points unresolved. But the contract should be negotiated in just under six weeks so that the EU heads of government can reach the agreement as planned at the summit on October 15th and can approve. And then it has to be ratified by parliaments in order to come into force at the end of the year. The economy on both sides of the English Channel is alarmed. The German Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the DIHK, warns that without a trade agreement, the introduction of tariffs, the interruption of supply chains and more difficult data exchange between the EU and the UK will threaten from the beginning of the next year. But there is very little time left to get an agreement off the ground, said DIHK Managing Director Martin Wansleben to the editorial team of several German newspapers. The German economy is very concerned that the Brexit negotiations on future economic relations are still stalling. Wansleben emphasized that the end of the Brexit transition phase on December 31st would mean additional economic challenges for the companies anyway. Companies definitely have to be prepared for longer clearance times at the borders, as well as customs bureaucracy and double approval procedures for products he warned. The uncertainty among German companies is palpable in a situation where they are already shaken by the corona crisis. Exports to the British Isles fell by 23% in the first half of 2020, compared to the same period in the previous year, much more than the corona-related decline of 14% to the rest of the EU. Great Britain is now only Germany's eighth most important trading partner. Three years ago, the country was still in fifth place, said Wansleben. But if a trade agreement fails now, things will get gloomy. According to the rules of the World Trade Organization, the WTO, duties would then have to be imposed on trade between Great Britain and the EU, including appropriate controls depending on the product groups. Not only many trade issues, but also cooperation in the fight against crime and terrorism, for example, would be unresolved for the time being. There are two major sticking points. The EU offers a comprehensive trade agreement with which the British could export to the internal market as desired without tariffs and quantity restrictions. In return, Brussels demands the same high environmental and social standards on the continent and the island and uniform rules for subsidies in order to avoid distortions of competitions. 
London harshly rejects this level playing field as an encroachment on its sovereignty. It does not want to be treated worse than, say, Canada. The fronts are hardened and a solution to this key issue is not in sight. Economically less important, but symbolically just as important, the British want to use their rich fishing grounds in the North Sea more alone. So far, boats from other EU countries have also been allowed to catch unlimited fish there, as long as they comply with the national quotas of the European maximum catches. In the future, London wants to set fishing quotas from year to year. The EU fishermen would have to cut back. A tricky point. Just a small comment on the Canada issue. If you have a look on the UK website and their trade deal proposal and the other deal proposals, they do want much more than Canada ever got. So they can't have the same deal as Canada has. And the EU wants as little change as possible and the fishing grounds to continue to be used jointly according to established rules. Finally, conversely, the British export a large part of their fish to the EU internal market, which could make access more difficult for Brussels. Boris Johnson, however, stands by the fishermen. He also promised in the election campaign at the end of 2019 that he would regain control of our fishing waters. Not of much use if you can't sell the fish, but okay. German fisheries would also be affected, of course. For of the seven ships in the German highly efficient deep sea fleet are currently sailing regularly in British waters, where the schooling fish trawlers make considerable parts of their catch. The EU cannot give in to the British demands on the fisheries issue, said the spokesman for the deep sea fisheries associations in, in, in Germany, Peter Breckling, to German newspapers. The British government wanted to continue unrestricted access to the internal market for its fish exports, but at the same time it wanted to restrict EU fishermen's access to British waters. That is totally unacceptable. If the British could get away with it, there would be a dangerous precedence for other areas as well. Brackling emphasized that the fishermen are urgently waiting for progress in the negotiations. We hope for an agreement to avoid chaos early next year, but it is also clear no deal is better than a bad deal. Prime Minister Boris Johnson sees it that way too. He asserts that with good preparation the chaos after failed negotiations can be avoided. When associations of British freight forwarders issued a fire letter on Friday warning of a Brexit disaster at the turn of the year, Johnson brusquely rejected fears. Britain would develop tremendously even without a follow-up agreement the Prime Minister promised. Well, he also promised to stop negotiating at the end of June without progress. Well, there was definitely no progress and we are almost in mid-September. He and his deadlines and he and his promises. Or he promised an oven-ready deal right at the moment of Brexit, that was January 31st. Or he promised all the big trade deals to be in place before the end of the transition period. The biggest trade deal the UK has so far is with Switzerland. And that's it. All the others are so small, I don't even want to mention them. So much about his promises. And if you now want to know more about European politics, YouTube has chosen another of my videos right here for you in the end screen, right next to your chance to subscribe to my channel, which I hope you already did. I'll see you in my next video. Click and enjoy. Und viel Spaß.